And we're back with another episode of the Lakers Fast Break Podcast. This is Gerald Glassman from our podcast. We're here from Lakers Fast Break. Pop up the Cosmos, where we cover the latest news and trends in pop culture each and every week, twice a week, wherever you get your podcasts. Inside sports, fantasy football, go ahead and check out our latest episode that we put up for you on the NFL Free Agency today at Inside Sports Fantasy Football. Joe Soros here. He is Mr. Ox 1947 at LakersBall.com. Plus, also, well, go ahead and make sure you check him out today at Simblades and support his company, Simblades with a Y.com. Also, as well, of course, he is going to be there tomorrow night for his nightcap. Lakers nightcap with Joe Soro tomorrow and Wednesday as well as the Lakers go ahead and start off on this road trip, which we'll talk about here in a sec. Plus also our good friends, Lakers in five, Vampire Jeff TV, John Costas, Lakers Corner, Clutch Talk, John McCallion, and Daniel Barry Sports Highlights. Yo, make sure you go ahead, like, subscribe, follow to all those great shows. And speaking of doing that, please like and subscribe, follow, whatever you can do to support us right here at the Lakers Fast Break. And if you do, it is sincerely appreciated. Darren says $20 or $19.99 from Darren if I take a shot. I don't drink alcohol, so more. What a douche. All right. Douche indeed. You can call me all you want, but you haven't been done for over 20 years outside of sake and maybe a champagne here or there, but. Right. What a douche. <laughs> Big dairy shots. I'll tell you what. What do you drink? Dairy, milk? Chocolate milk, the hard stuff. Oh, God. Sorry, man. All I got right now in the fridge is just water and uh, some orange yeah, pineapple. I don't hear about your oh. fridge? Yeah, well, then shut up, then. No. All right. Sorry. All I take is dairy shots, Blood and Hound. Sorry, Darren. I'll tell you what. Joe will make up if you want to. Get him a water. white Russian. Uh, I'm a white American. Sorry. Thank you for asking. But uh, it is, of course, the Lakers fast break. Yes, I'll be here all week. Uh, Orange pineapple shots. Now, I can do that because I did go ahead with the ninja. Make some orange and uh, pineapple blend there. So I'll I'll take a shot of that before we leave. I'll go ahead and I'll grab it. Yeah, I'll take a shot. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut up. You had your chance and you blew it. But it is, of course, the Lakers fast break. It is Daryl Glasser. Thanks so much for watching this. I truly appreciate it. Thank you again, Darren, for the shot of 1999 as far as the Super Chat is concerned. But the Lakers head out on the road tomorrow, Tuesday, against Milwaukee, and Wednesday, right after that in Memphis. It's actually very weird how they're putting two games at Memphis near the back end of the season. But, hey, it is what it is. The Lakers are playing, again, a back-to-back. Milwaukee's game tomorrow, 4.30. It is on TNT. But the thing is, that in question, that was announced today as far as the injury report, suddenly, and you shouldn't be surprised when you actually hear this. We talked about this as far as on the show, the trend that's always happened in these back-to-backs where LeBron James is doubtful. Doubtful for tomorrow's game. He's not as usual questionable. He is doubtful for tomorrow's game. So it's leaning towards not playing. Uh, it doesn't say through illness or anything like that as far as what happened to D'Angelo. It just says doubtful in regards to what's going on. But will he play or will he follow the trend that his MO, per se, for the, that he's done most of the season? We'll talk about that and the Lakers' chances and how big is this road trip that's coming up. We're going to go ahead and talk about it as well. Uh, Stone Hansen and also L. Rob have said they're going to go ahead and jump back on the show here in the coming days because it's a East Coast trip. So look out for that. But also here today, a good man indeed to talk about the road trip is, of course, the guy who just threatened violence on me. It is, of course, Oxide 47 at LakersBall.com and Mr. Simblade, Simblades himself. It is Joe Soro. Joe, good to have you here. Uh, while I go grab said orange pineapple smush, slushy, smoothie, whatever you want to say, the Lakers head into Milwaukee tomorrow, possibly without LeBron James. But we'll see uh, what happens. 
Stone Hansen, though, some sad words about what he said on Twitter today. Uh, but yeah, he's uh, about him not pursuing basketball anymore. But uh, hopefully he'll still really? be. Uh, yeah, he, he said he's just not pursuing this that area of his life. Maybe it's when he considers talking about the draft at all. But he has said he'll join us uh, as casually as a fan uh, for continued games. He mentioned that to me last week. So I'm hoping he'll do that for the road trip. But so sorry to hear him announce that on Twitter. But Joe, uh, speaking of things I was sad to see on Twitter was the report, the injury report saying LeBron James is doubtful for tomorrow's game. Your story on LeBron's tender ankle possibly keeping him out of tomorrow's game. It's uh, part of the course, as they say, right? Yeah. He misses the important game and then plays this back end of the crappier game. I wanted to start off this road trip with a win in Milwaukee with a full arsenal, and then I felt that it would be good to sit him for Memphis, but he does it in reverse. So the Lakers are going to have to pull a rabbit out of their hat, I guess, against Milwaukee, hopefully something that results in what they did to to Boston a few weeks back. If they can do that, then it becomes a good decision. And lately they've been making a good decision on when to sit LeBron uh, and when to sit AD. So I'll, I'll hold off until tomorrow to see how it, how the results come about. And then they got Memphis on Wednesday, which I'd like to say at least should be something that they should go home with uh, in terms of a win. Uh, so you'll think they'll split? I, re- I do, yes. I do. I think they'll split. Okay. Uh, and then, I, yeah. and then they're going to have to run another track meet here in two of the last of the next four games uh, with Indiana and Indiana is going to be at home. They're going to probably need 160 points to beat in the in Indiana. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, and I'm, I'm sure they will not get the chance to go to the line. What? 43 times, I think was the amount. Uh, if you include the technical that was given. So I don't think the Lakers will get to the line 43 times on Friday in Indiana. Cause if you're counting that, I think you're sadly mistaken. But uh, before I go grab said drink, I wanted to ask your thoughts on this. Again, the Lakers have been terrible all season on the road. I mean, anybody out there who's talked about any faith in the Lakers, although get it done. We've, Cause we've seen them over course this past weekend, you know, there's those Lakers fans that are in our mix that are on, in our chat that are the eternal optimists. They see, they see the eternal sunshine peering over Lakersville, no matter what happens, not seeing sometimes the clarity of what is there on in black and white. The Lakers have been absolutely putrid on the road this season, 12 and 20. It's absolutely a terrible record on the road. And this to me is the biggest road trip of the season for them because, you know, it, it, I don't think that sixth, seventh or eighth is within reach at this point, especially after tonight's action for at least six and seven. Maybe you could go ahead and sneak by Phoenix and eighth, but that's a tough wait and see. But your thoughts on how important this trip is just to build confidence in the team. Forget about the standings. Just if they do well, how much it will build confidence in a four, two, or five and one road trip. I don't think it's going to build anything just because I think they're set in who they are. They Dallas is not helping us at this point. And that was the one team I thought maybe they would be able to uh, win one, lose one, win two, lose one. Unfortunately, they, they keep winning. So that one, that one's going to go a certain way in terms of not catching up to them. Phoenix is a team that's on the downward spiral, and their schedule is harder than any of the playing teams left right now. And Houston's making things very, very interesting. That's something we're going to want to watch. At this point, they're half a game behind Golden State, and Golden State is reeling as well. Houston just won their ninth straight. Uh, If Golden State continues to just not be able to be effective, then it's very likely that Houston ends up jumping them and the Lakers end up probably playing Houston in the play-in. I just, I, 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 it's too early to kind of decide on what might happen. It's not a good start that LeBron isn't playing 
for them in the Milwaukee game. I really wanted him to play in the Milwaukee game, but if he can somehow sneak a win there, I think the four and two record is very realistic at that point. The Lakers are not good on the road, but they've been very good against East teams. So maybe those things will balance out. But they're gonna need to they're gonna need to sack up here. They're gonna really need to sack up. And they have to make a decision on whether they want to play two games or one game to get into the playoffs. That's what's on the chalkboard if I'm the coach. Do you guys want to play one game? Or do you want to play two games? Two games is very risky in a play-in. Two elimination games is always a risky proposition, especially for a team that's been typically kind of weak-minded most of the year uh, in, turn, in, in getting competitive teams on their heels. So it's going to be a, this could be a six-game road trip that tells us exactly who this team is. So you're just taking a shot of pineapple, whatever the hell that is? Yeah, just pineapple and orange. I put it in the blender and a little bit. And you expect him to give you 1999 for that? I didn't expect anything. He just did it anyways because he wants to Maybe put Maybe you should expect in. yourself out the door. How about that? It's my damn channel. So yeah. I'll expect myself to do anything yeah, I want you to. Think. Expect you. yourself in the face once in a while. Uh, I'll expect you inside your head. Yeah. You're lucky I your family was with you. Otherwise, I would have slapped you. Uh, my family was probably telling me to slap you no they weren't doing that they probably wanted me to slap you no it probably is pretty pathetic guys i'll be back i'm gonna go do what real men do and that's drink yeah so when you're you're uh, dead from cirrhosis of the liver i'll be laughing on your grave but it is gerald glassford thanks so much again for watching listening truly appreciate it robert says lebron smells blood in the water and thank you by the way big baby for liking the video today uh, so far just uh Joe and I arguing, but I guess that's Abbott and Costello for you. Uh, Robert says LeBron smells blood in the water. They can catch the suns. Robert, you are the eternal optimist. I will give you that. Uh, they can catch the suns. But again, as I told you, and as I told everyone out there, they have to win on the road. They have to learn to win on the road. 12 and 20 is not going to get the job done, Robert they will be playing on the road the majority of their games, whether it's the play-in or the playoffs. We have to come to that reality. And if you're not in that reality, you need to get in that reality because the fact is simple, absolutely simple, that the Lakers are and have been this season a terrible road, tree, road team. And until they get on the road to being a better road team, they're not going to go far at all on the season, whether it's catch up to Phoenix, whether it's going to go ahead and, you know, catch, you know, like I said, catch up to Phoenix, go ahead and be able to go in and play in, be able to go to playoffs, what have you. It does not matter. You need to go ahead and win on the road, especially when you're in the situation that the Lakers are in now. So Robert, while your optimism is absolutely greatly appreciated, you've got to realize that again, uh, yes, the Phoenix Suns have a little bit harder schedule upcoming than the Lakers because the Lakers have two Memphis games on the slate. They've got Brooklyn on the slate. So it is a little bit easier. But remember, they are right now, as Joe drinks to his health before he gets psoriasis of the liver, the Lakers are still two games back in the loss column, Joe. I'm Do you shotgun think this all over your face? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You talk Salute to the, uh, all men who are watching. Uh, you talk to real women too. Your talk is cheap, anyway. Ah, uh, yeah. Woo. All right. Uh, uh, I'll have the coroner call me down there in Temecula County. Coroner, yeah, coroner, yeah. I'll live everybody. <sighs> You're, you know what? You're probably so stubborn. You probably will. Yeah. 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 Uh, and Kubro says oh, that's. You know what? That's true, cool bro. I gotta give that yes, Joe the hypocrite. Yes, so he tells you not to eat McDonald's and all the garbage in the drive-thrus. I'm trying to eat some, drink something that's healthy for me. I get persecuted for it, and this man over here. I didn't come on the show to be ridiculed by a 15 year old that doesn't know anything yet. Yeah, but he I'm knows a grown ass man. 
So you, but you're telling him not to eat all that crap, which is true. You shouldn't eat all that crap. And then you go ahead and you drink yourself into oblivion each and every time. Huh? Can you, what the heck? Phantasm spasm. You gotta. <laughs> Goodness gracious, man. No, thank you. <laughs> oh, That's crazy. The internets. The yes, internets. Exactly. <laughs> Darren says alcohol cleans up your system. Now, it, I heard the old wine deal. If you drink a glass of wine, supposedly it's good for your health. So it is what it is. But uh, it is the Lakers fast break. But Joe, uh, getting back to the Lakers, you know, they have to win on the road. They're going to have to win on the road in the plan, playoffs, regardless. And I understand Robert is very optimistic on the Lakers. But they're two back in the loss column behind Phoenix. They're at, you know, what, two and a half games overall, if you count the wins as well. But the task is daunting in the final 10 games to go ahead and get the Lakers where they need to be, at least above Phoenix for seventh place. I, I, oh, eighth place, I'm sorry, eighth place in the Western Conference. So I really think that's a, that's going to be a tough deal for them to do. The, the issue is, too, is is what are they playing for? Are they going to do all this only to face Denver in the first round? If yeah. that happens, they're in trouble. Yeah. They're they're dead in the water at that point. I think that's something you and I both adamantly agree upon. I think there's a small yeah. there's a small chance that that they can beat Oklahoma City. They match up very well against them. But then how much is that going to tax them playing all the way in Oklahoma? Then if they face let's say uh, Minnesota in the second round based off of current standings. You got to travel all the way to Minnesota and all the way to LA. It is, it's, it's worse. It's worse than it's worse. If they do do it, it's not going to be, it's going to just keep getting worse. You're going to play, let's say Oklahoma city. Then you play, let's say Minnesota in the second round. And then you play the likely Denver, mm -hmm. and then oh, the the Celtics might be meeting you in in Boston. There, it's just it's 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 too for a team that's got depth issues, for a team that doesn't play well on the road, for a team that doesn't have a third guy that can really kind of spell the two stars. D'Angelo can on one side of the court, but we would need someone that could play on the other side as well, especially if you're uh, trying to stop a, an elite score, which as, as they get on and on and on to the, this thing, Denver, Boston all have elite scorers on their team. It's just it's just going to be very difficult. It's, it's just not likely to happen. We're going to be here for the ride, but the ride will likely stop uh, sooner rather than later. It's just it's just the, the predicament that they're in at the, at this point. You're asking them to do the same exact thing that they did last season, correct? As far as or similar trajectory, as far as to go up through there. Yeah, I, you know they they were fortunate to get they the were seven spot. They were fortunate at the seventh spot. They won a game that they almost lost, by the way, and then. They met a team that was somewhat reeling from all the things going on with Ja, ja Morant. And then the Golden State Warriors were on that trajectory down. Uh, and it really started right at the end of that year. And they, they haven't really been able to kind of get out of that funk. And they were competitive in every game against Denver. But the problem is they don't have the prime time plays against Denver. They 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 play well for second third quarter. Hell, even all the way through the full fourth almost, but they keep just falling apart when it matters at the end. And that's yeah, what Murray they, absolutely kills them. Yeah, they can't yeah. they can't stop Murray. Murray almost goes into hey, I know they're tired mode and I'm going to go do my thing now because I know they're not going to be able to catch up to me. Robert, instead of checking out our shows from last year, maybe we'll go ahead and make it a little easier right now. He said, Joe, do you think the Lakers would make it that far last year? 
I think we could say yeah, kind of, and say I think we were saying yes. We definitely thought they would beat Golden State. Now Memphis was an issue we thought or would be more of an issue, but their injuries looked like there was, that there was that was their undoing. I thought their their injuries really in the front line really hurt them, Joe. So that was a little bit more of a guessing game. But Golden State, we absolutely thought to a man that we thought Golden State was absolutely going to get it done. When they beat my Memphis, I thought they were going to make a run, yeah. and I had a I had a pretty good feeling that they would be competitive against Denver. I just didn't know they'd be competitive for four games and then get waxed in all four games. Yeah, they should have gone two and two in those first first four games. They were ahead a lot in game two. They were ahead a lot uh, in game four, but they just couldn't close the door. They don't have that third guy that could keep people honest. If they had had this year's D'Angelo Russell, I think they would have won those two games. But they didn't have that because Denver outcoached, outplayed, and outclutched the Lakers. They basically were the Lakers when they won championships. They just outclutched people. So I want to ask you this also, Bag and Dragon uh, was talking about. And again, it's the Lakers fast break. Truly appreciate you joining us for the snack pack. Bag and Dragon said earlier about if, let's say they face OKC. For some how OKC goes on a run climbs back over Denver to get to first place. And then they would be facing, let's say the Lakers get through the plan and end up in eighth place. If that's the case, Joe, OKC, I think is a better matchup. Uh, he said uh, to the, something that like bag and dragon said, Chet Holmgren would uh, be very successful against AD. I don't think yet bag and dragon give it two, three seasons when Holmgren has got a little bit more strength, a little bit more experience, and when AD is a little bit more on the decline, I think it then it, you will see a little bit better success for Holmgren at that point. But right now, AD, as we've seen all season long, has dominated Holmgren at this point. AD has had trouble only against what four? What do you count them? Three or four? All right now, he has three or four that he can't beat at this point. The, the... AD has shown that he's an, a power forward. He's not a center. He's been getting beat up by But centers. against Holmgren, he's still doing Holmgren, he won't have a problem with. Yeah. Holmgren doesn't have enough beef on him. Although, I have to say that I give a lot of props to Chet for, for missing all of last year and currently is on pace to finishing the season playing all 82 games. Yeah, credit, big credit. He's so going to be... Big credit to him and big credit to those who worked on him in the offseason to make him healthy. I want... Uh, I had a I had some dialogue uh, on the internet today uh, on what Chet Holmgren's potential is. Someone had mentioned that they see a little bit of Pagasol in him. And I start thinking, I'm like, hmm, it could be that could be something. Although he's a better defender than than Pau, but in terms of impact, I could see. Uh, I would say Pau's a better rebounder. Uh, Holmgren is a better rim protector. Right, uh, I'd say. In terms of impact, not 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 so much the game that they have, but I'd say his floor, if he stays healthy, is Paul Gasol, which means he'll be a Hall of Famer. Someone had mentioned KD. I said his ceiling is KD, but it's not likely he'll ever reach that because KD is a sniper. He, he's a sniper, game in and game out. You don't. That's a that's a gift that doesn't just come around, and it's not something you necessarily develop. It's something that's already in you, and then you develop it, kind of like speed. You can't teach KD's ability to score. Uh, and I don't think he'll get to that, but that would be a ceiling if he were to get there, right? So I think he's going to be in the middle, which is, again, Hall of Fame worthy at that point. But as far as AD is concerned this year uh, against Chet, I think it's a good matchup. The Oklahoma City uh, Thunder have a problem matching up with the Lakers. They have not Major problem matching up with LeBron and AD. And if it's in a seven-game series, it's going to be a, a dogfight. That's for sure. And I think the Lakers have a chance at winning that series. But the problem is, again, it's not just one series. And, and, and the, the geographical situation that's going to come about in this thing is going to be murderous. Think about it for a second. Let's just put this in perspective. Let's say the Lakers make it to the eighth seed. And then Oklahoma City steals the one seat. We're playing Oklahoma. They have to fly to Oklahoma for the first and second game, come back home for three and four, and then they have to go back and forth if they go seven. That's a lot of miles to fly. Let's say they win that series in seven. Then 
they likely will play Minnesota in the second round, which means likely, because I'm predicting that Carl Anthony Towns is going to miss the first uh, round in the playoffs. I, I don't have any inside information. I'm just going by his injury and what it usually means. They think they could probably beat New Orleans or the Clippers or Sacramento or Phoenix, whoever that is, that's going to be sitting at six. Clippers, right? They win that series. Now the Lakers have to play Minnesota. They have to start there for two games. Then they got to fly back. And then again, the last three games back and forth. So imagine if that's a six or seven game series. It's going to be a lot of travel there. Let's say they win that one. It's likely, barring injury, that then they're going to have to go face Denver in that altitude, their talent. It's just, it's murderous row of a playoff run. It would be unprecedented, not not just in who they're playing and where they're playing, but they're, it'll be unprecedented in that an eight seed beats a one seed, beats a two seed, beats a three seed, then beats a one seed in the finals because I'm thinking Boston's finally going to get over the hump based off what I've seen. It would probably likely put LeBron in a category that there, that there will be no denying anymore who the greatest is. That would actually, in my book, yeah. yeah, be a greater feat than him beating the 73 9 and 9 Warriors team in 16. Really? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Because he had to come back with just three games there. This is a gauntlet of a run, a gauntlet. You're talking every single series from one to four is going to tax you to death. And if they were to make some miraculous run and win it all, beating those teams, you're essentially beating every top team in the NBA. Every single team I just mentioned is the top four teams based off of the regular season in my book. I think Minnesota, I think Oklahoma City is better than Milwaukee, better than Cleveland. It's it's going to be Denver, Oklahoma City, Minnesota, and the Celtics. Those are the top four teams. It's, it's a fantasy. I'm just kind of saying what, what it would mean should they have a miracle here. It's, and uh, at the same time, informing everyone that this is what the Lakers have put themselves in. Those four and five games we talked about on the last show on how detrimental those losses were, those losses to Chicago after the – after The the Brooklyn loss. The Brooklyn loss, the Chicago loss, the, the San Antonio loss on the back end of a back-to-back. There's a lot of losses. The Memphis loss, the, the Heat loss when they were really – just really struggling – Five losses right there that you should have won would have put you right now in a situation where you could probably comfortably get a fifth seed and at least start the seed, start the first run at home, even though you might you won't you wouldn't be technically at home because I think the Clippers end up likely at the four or five anyways. It's I a lot of stuff, man. It's a lot of stuff. It's a lot of stuff to 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 ponder and to think about. Joe wasn't saying that he is, you know, the greatest of all time. He's saying that it would be a great run if the Lakers from where they're at, eighth or ninth place. That's He's never going to be the greatest, guys. I watched Michael Jordan play. I watched Kobe Bryant play from, from basketball, pure basketball. LeBron is not a better basketball player than Michael it Jordan. It would be Bryant. his greatest run of his, his career. His career, his basketball his career, career. His career there's, only. There's no more denying anything after this, is what I'm saying. Okay. You cannot deny. You can't sit there and nitpick anything anymore. It would be next level type stuff. Think about it. He's, he's created his own niche. He came back from a 3-1 deficit against the greatest regular season. In my book, honestly, could be the greatest team that ever played basketball. It's very similar to the 18-1 Patriots in 07. They didn't win the title, but those that team was – they mastered basketball for a season. They really did. And then you have him winning three championships on three with three different franchises and being the guy. He won 
Finals MVPs in all three situations, plus another one in Miami. And then you, you're you asking, how can you deny an eight seed, let's say, if he gets in and beats the four top teams, including the champs, and the Celtics to end it, to get 18? That's all. That's that's how you would write a movie because you can make up that one, right? Imagine that. It's not just the wins. It's it's what it impacts. It it would impact beyond this just the wins. We passed the Celtics. We beat the Celtics in the finals. He beats the champs in Denver. He gets revenge off them from last year. You beat the one seed. You beat the three seed. You beat the two seed. I mean, it's just it's not. It, it, there's so many f- scenarios there that you you look you can look at. And say, oh my God, what the hell? What the hell just happened? What did these guys just do? They they went on a LA Kings run to a Stanley Cup. They were the eighth seed and they ended up winning it all. So I want to ask you this. Again, uh, Phoenix does have a little bit of a harder road, especially after losing tonight's inexcusable loss to the San Antonio Spurs. And if the Lakers have one of these inexcusable losses, you know what, that then... Of course, that brings everything right back to square one for us. But with the if you look at and compare the last few games left, the last 11 games for the Lakers and, and thereabouts the same for the Phoenix Suns, actually, I think they have um, 10 games left because uh, the Lakers are, are two and a half games back. At Denver for Phoenix, at Oklahoma City, at New Orleans, those are three losses right there that they're staring in the face. Versus Cleveland at home, you never know. Cleveland's fighting for the playoff spot, so they may lose that one. At home against Minnesota, New Orleans, the Clippers, who knows what Clippers you're getting on which day of the week because they absolutely suck right now. But by the time they play them, they could be on a hot streak again. They play two against the Clippers, home and away, and then end up Sacramento, Minnesota. So I give you the fact that Phoenix's road is a little tougher, Joe. Is it tough enough to allow the Lakers to squeak in there if they have a decent road trip? Because I think that this road trip is going to define where the Lakers are going to end up. They're not starting out taking it too seriously with LeBron not playing. I believe they've conceded that they're going to be a nine. And they're looking at Which it is as... a shame. Yes, because now they're looking at, well, let's not bust the, the tire uh, um, three weeks before the season ends. We've accepted that we are who we are. Let's just get there with LeBron intact, with AD intact, and everyone intact, and then we'll go play hard once we get in the playoffs. That's what they're looking at. They are looking at last year as a barometer. They're like, look, if we can just get in, we can. We have a chance to possibly make a run again. So how irritating will it be if the Lakers, let's say they keep it close. Let's say it's like a five-point and under loss for the Lakers tomorrow. How irritating will that be? I'm... I'm already irritated by the team, so it wouldn't change much. I, I have not enjoyed the season in, in any – I think the the one game that I would say I really, really enjoyed – there's been really good games. I'm not saying there hasn't been good games, a good handful of games. But the only game that I saw that I really – after the game, I felt this euphoria of being a Laker fan was was after they beat Boston without AD and LeBron. Okay. That was the only game where I, I – the game ended, and I was just like, yeah. Mm, mm. got me excited it's just it's not it's not an endearing team I, I i don't i don't enjoy watching these guys play except a little bit of d'angelo when he's making shots i like that boston game though that boston game was enjoyable yeah and uh, you know lebron does have really entertaining results to ad to it's just it's not enough. It's always in spurts. It's never. I'm not. I'm never watching a full week where they're just doing their thing. It's always okay. They're doing really good in the first quarter, first half, maybe the first three quarters, and then they're, they're just they do so many things that I just doesn't make any sense and just kind of gets you into that mode of are these guys really mentally about this? Are they just lallygagging? They know that they're not going to be able to get anything from their coach, things like that. It's. It's just not. It's not. It's not an enjoyable product, and the NBA doesn't help with their stupid reviews and their stupid refs and just the overall softness of everything. It's just the whole thing doesn't flow nicely. It's so funny because uh, I know BD uh, uh, on 
twist. That was a that, good one too, Robert. Yeah. Uh, the comeback against the Clippers was a good one. Yes, absolutely. The bronze in the fourth. But I, I didn't. I didn't feel. I still don't. I didn't feel after the game like excited. What was the one with De- D'Angelo hitting? Was that the that wasn't the uh, what's the one with D'Angelo and the hit that had that huge comeback? Which game was that one? He's uh, like he had that like twenty eight points in the. I forgot. Yeah, but that one was a good one too. But um, I wanted to mention Bag and Dragon. Uh, they'll have to pick their poison because he was talking about you know they they the Lakers have no chance if they meet up against Luca in a play in. He's mentioning that and. It's tough. Pick your poison. Luke and Kyrie or KD and Booker or Steph and whoever you want to say, Kaminga, because you can't say Clay anymore, or unless Clay sometimes you know wants to go ahead and play. And sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. And, or Sabonis and Fox. You're not going to have an easy, you know, matchup, any of these, Joe. As long as they're healthy, and each of these teams is going to be a tough matchup in a play-in or a scenario, Joe. Yeah, the the West is, you know, looking at the standings, you have the eleventh freaking seed above five hundred, and they they just won nine in a row. They have a better point differential than the Lakers too, by the way. Yep, they have a better they have a better below zero. Yeah, they have a better point differential than Dallas than Golden State. Than the Lakers, than the Kings, and this is the 11th seed that was supposed to be done about two weeks ago. Yep. You look at the East, and you have you have the eighth seed, Philadelphia 76ers, who are 39 and 33, and then after that, it's 34, 38, 32, 39 for the nine and ten. You really don't really have any juggernauts there. You, you you have Boston, the Bucks, and that's it. Everyone else is good to mediocre. Once again, I wanted to mention that LeBron James has been listed as doubtful, not his usual questionable with his ankle issues. It's not, a, I guess, relating to any COVID illness, non-COVID illness, or anything like that as far as uh, – right now for the injury report so him being listed as doubtful has led us to believe he may be out for tomorrow's game uh, as far as against milwaukee 4 30 p.m go ahead and join us on the playback.tv so secrets fast break simulcast and we'll go ahead and hopefully have stone hansen and also l rob is going to hop on one of our post games here in the not too distant future because we're on the east coast now so it's easier times for some of these guys We're looking forward to catching up with them as well as they talk Lakers. But Joe, it is to me the most important road trip of the year. I know they have one final road trip of two games in the back end of the season, but I still think this is where all the marbles are going to happen. This is where the Lakers who are pretty much statistically fixed in ninth still have a chance I think a slight puncher's chance to get into eighth, especially to how hard Phoenix's road is to the end of the season. But again, the Lakers have to do something they haven't done all year consistently, Joe, and not even close, and that's win on the road, which I need to be proven to. I need to see this in action. Before I need to see I need to see them win consistently on the road. No, they're not. Just four except, and two. Yeah. Four and two would be a, a just you, you have great. to stop expecting things. Just I'm not expecting anything. Let That's them the do. Let them let them play these games, and we'll will dictate how how things turn out after the game is done. I'm not going to expect them to all of a sudden turn into magicians here in the last 11 games. When right the moment you get into the important road game, all of a sudden your main guy is doubtful. They're not taking it seriously, or they're saving LeBron up for the summer. Or something. I don't know what they're saving him for. Whether whether he's not going to make it or not is irrelevant now or later. It just you, you might as well give it a shot to see if you can guarantee yourself a playoff, a playoff berth, and maybe a playoff berth that can avoid Denver. You play Denver, you're not getting past five games at the most. But they're. They're not there. 
They're we want to be it. proven wrong if that's the case. Proven wrong is not. Uh, it's just not. That's not a good. Again, not a realistic thing. To, this team has too many flaws to run into a cohesive championship mentality team with clutch shooters and size. Again, at that team in Denver is, you know, if they're playing on all cylinders, it's going to be hard to stop them, any team to stop them, including Boston. So if that's the case in the Lakers. That's, that's the thing we're playing with here. Yeah. That's the thing that you're we're constantly playing with. Uh, I, we, we have to rely on Denver this year too because they're the only team that can smoke Boston this year, likely. I'm not going to say all the way because it's still the East. It's still the East, and every time I've given the East any props, they've failed miserably the last four years. I'm not going to do that. Once again, it is the Lakers fast break. It is Joe Sorrell. I mean, I guess you could say Milwaukee kind of came up. Yeah, yeah, you could. But, I mean, I thought I thought Phoenix lost that series more than Milwaukee won it. And they were up to they were up and they were up 2-0 and they had a couple of shots that they had made in game three they would have swept likely swept Milwaukee if they had won game three that was that was that was a really disappointing series looking at it from a from a non-fan perspective in any way just looking at it as a straight arrow I, I that would have been that would have killed me if I was Phoenix Phoenix had no reason to lose that series and Giannis had that hyperextended knee it, yeah, they had no reason to lose that. They're too, up too low. You gotta close that, man. CP3 isn't chasing a championship. Booker puts himself in a position where now his draft stat, not his his draft uh redo would be him at one, a hundred percent. And I mean it might be there anyways, but he puts he 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 has a different mentality going into the the future here if he wins that series. That's funny. You guys are killing me on the chat. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, Robert, the thing is, I, I think I know what he's doing here. I think he knows that it's going to be difficult to beat Milwaukee anyways. So he's going to miss the Milwaukee game, and he's going to play the easier game in Memphis and guarantee the Memphis win. So look look for this to be a split, the first two games. And then... The Toronto in, game and Toronto in, Washington back to back. Indiana's going to be, uh, I'd say that's going to be the most taxing game they play on the road. Yeah. And then maybe they feel comfortable that they can win in Toronto, Washington, and then uh, Brooklyn, Toronto, and Washington. I think they're looking at it possibly the same way we are. They lose to Milwaukee, beat Memphis, lose to Indiana, and then finish off that road trip against Brooklyn and Toronto and Washington with wins. If that were to happen, uh, you take what you can get at that point. Four and two on that road trip after a long, exhausting season works. Then you have three games at home. Then you have, you have three games at home. And the Lakers might have a chance at closing out Golden State again this season because I think that uh, April 9th game against Golden State is going to be important for golden state to win otherwise if houston continues to do what they're doing they might be they might be close to not making the play in so let me ask you this uh and again it's the lakers fast break thanks for so much for again for joining us I want to ask you this joe you know when it comes to lebron that's been his mo pretty much all season as far as skipping the game that seemingly on paper will be the bigger challenge to play the next night against or switching around whatever the easier of the two games is he will play whatever the harder of the two games back to back he typically doesn't play this is something on the verge of whatever happens this season at the end him having the ability to go ahead and either sign or pick up that one year extension or tear that up and get a new one two three year extension given to him on a new contract this is something that we may have to get used to going forward, Joe. It's not just this year. It's not just the fact that it's the MO this time around. This could be something that we have to get used to if we have LeBron James stay with the Lakers for the next few seasons. 
Yeah, the the two two issues with LeBron. Should he take an extension at full capacity? Is not only are you going to have to still massage his season participation, you're not going to allow yourself any flexibility to actually add some talent on this team to 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 allow him to take those sabbaticals. And we get it, Search. We understand he's 39 years old. We get that he's old. But the problem is he also would just take a guess on how much next year he'll take up out of the salary cap. Let's say 50 to $60 million. Is that a reasonable assumption, Joe? He's going to do whatever he wants. Yeah. The Lakers make a lot of money with LeBron wearing the – when they do wear the golden armor. I mean, if you keep him, this is what is probably going you to keep be. LeBron at full capacity in terms of his salary. You are not going to have depth next year. Even if you traded Rui, sign and traded D'Angelo in a deal, in a package, and Austin Reeves, let's say, for some other guy. LeBron, if he wants to win and wants to sign an extension, let's say, for two more years. He rips up the contract and says, "Give me a, give me a two-year, sixty million dollar contract, or you want to do three for ninety with the option for the third, something like that." That would be fair. I if think you did that, was- that. You're now allowing the Lakers flexibility to not have to relinquish depth in a trade you don't have to trade all three of those guys plus you have to factor in that you might be losing d'angelo anyways but i have a good feeling that the nba isn't valuing valuing d'angelo russell as much as laker fans think they are they're not no one's going to come in and drop a hundred million dollar contract to d'angelo russell just understand that's not going to happen he might get a two three year at 20 sure but Would would he get a four for 80 I don't I don't know. I don't think so. I don't think he'll get four for eighty unless the Lakers give it to him and, and and put a team option on number four. But that would only be so that that would only be if they can get another guy there. You get another guy in there that's a legitimate third guy with A D and LeBron, someone who could really play defense and play offense and spell LeBron when he does sit. Now you're looking at four players that are gonna be pretty important during the year and it doesn't have to be a shooting guard it could be either wing position any any kind of wing i don't but i don't know who would be available i don't know what kind of guy the only name that comes to mind is someone like spider out in cleveland but i don't know if that's even i don't i still don't understand how that guy's leaving cleveland like i don't i don't i keep hearing he's leaving or getting trade i don't i don't know what why that is i don't see based off his contract why that would that why that is a guarantee like is there information coming out from his camp that's teasing it like i don't understand how that's feasibly uh uh sorry feasibly uh geez i'm forgetting my words uh geez I don't know how that's contractually that's old, doesn't it? possible. That's it. That's the word I was looking for. Okay. I don't know how, based off his contract, it's possible for him to leave at this point. His contract doesn't run out until next year. And then he has a player option for that following year. But that doesn't do us any good. What are they going to do? Trade him in this offseason? For what? What do the Lakers have that they can go get? Donovan, a Donovan Mitchell type player. This is the problem. And we have to understand that if the Lakers don't make it out of the play in, they are now a lottery team, which means New Orleans has an option to to to, to, to switch to, to, to this year's draft. I hope they do. I really hope they do as far as take this year's because this is a bad year for the draft and the Lakers can just focus in on a better year for drafting next year. But that's just my opinion. I think it's a better draft overall next year. I think it's a deeper draft from what I'm seeing. But position-wise, you never know where the Lakers may be at that point next year. So could be a correlation to them. The, the, 
New Orleans would have to say, we think they'll stink more next year, so we'll wait till next year. That's yeah. the only thing. That's that what they're happen. gambling on. Yeah. If they if they do indeed go that route that route, then then we might get lucky and have a lottery pick this year that maybe they actually do draft someone that has see that's the other thing is how how this just absolutely der- derailed in so many ways in terms of the depth. Imagine if you had drafted a a functional valuable player in the draft this last year he would he would have played an integral part on this team and helped it a lot then you have this year's draft to even you know to, to pick somebody let's say if you keep your pick in the in in that area in the teens now you have two players that you don't have to pay a lot of money for that would be valuable rotational players and then this summer you bring back the De- d'angelo or you sign them and trade them for more talent and then you you can Give it another shot if you decide that you want to keep LeBron for another year or two. It's a lot of lot of stuff that they have to make up for. It's a lot of screw ups that they have to cover their rear ends with, and they have to do it all in an off season if they have any shot at being competitive for a title. That's true. That's a good point. Uh, but I wanted to go ahead and make sure your comments out there are correlated on the show truly appreciate you talking out there to us on that darren says i honestly think the analytical bs made the coaches tell him to stop shooting his turnaround i think he was talking about uh rui were you talking about rui on that he should just do it it's trying to get closer than uh screwing up his game i were you talking about rui on that i think he's talking about lebron okay LeBron um was, lebron was doing the hakeem turnaround jumper yeah that's true very, very, that. very consistently in, in 20 and 2021. Xbox, I know he's a fellow Australian, uh, a giddy, a uh, good rebounder, excellent playmaker, cannot shoot enough consistently to save his life. And defense, uh, he is obviously a little slow footed. So uh, that's the problem. There's, and, and I know that he will probably be a source of a trade. He will be available this summer by OKC because he is the. Off, he's often been called uh, when I talk to OKC experts, and I actually, you know, we correlate through an interview quite a few. He's been considered the the weak link in that starting lineup uh, for OKC, but he will be available. So the thing is, if you don't keep D'Angelo Russell, if he goes and you decide you want to go ahead and settle on a point guard option, he could be out there. But understand that he has some deficiencies in his game as well. So. It is a Lakers fast break. Uh, a lot of things. Xbox says we just want Aussie there. <laughs> Josh, he can play. He can play. Good playmaker. Good passer. Excellent rebounder. Six eight. Problem is again, he's got deficiencies in his game. And I know if you've watched uh, OKC games, you understand that they, a lot of times the other team they put their worst defender or their big man on him because they just dare him to shoot all the time. I think Giddy has a lot of potential to be in a very good. Six seven guy on a title team, he just needs to keep playing and needs to shoot better. If he can get out to anywhere to 37, I think he's got the he's definitely got the he's a he's a bona fide NBA player. If he keeps oh. working on his game, he can be very, very valuable to a competitive com, competing team. Absolutely, whether it's in Oklahoma City or not, that's a that's a question. I think they're going to try and upgrade his position. Yeah. I think they're going to move him. Uh, Curtis says, Giddy knows the area. He likes Newport Beach. I don't know. <laughs> what, what did I miss in Newport Beach? And that's where, with the girl, he was caught the underage girl. That was him, got investigation. Yeah. Uh, wasn't he 20 years old and she was 17 or something? Something like that, yeah. I mean, come on, guys. This is a difference, okay? This isn't, this isn't half dating 18 year olds when his 80s guys come on well they was he was under investigation but i, I believe he was cleared of uh, course he was cleared he's a yeah. kid <laughs> he's a kid himself <laughs> unlike uh the raptors jante porter uh, did you get a chance to read that story hey guys i kissed a 14 year old once when i was 14 <laughs> oh, there you go. Now you're going to make cool bro jealous. <laughs> but uh, did you get a chance to see that story on the Raptors' Jonte Porter? I did. Uh, there's 
there's a it's kind of like with cops and firemen there's a there's an underground culture in 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 sports that athletes are addicted to gambling it's this is not likely just happening now because of DraftKings and all these fan duel type stuff ask charles barkley charles barkley is a degenerate gambler hmm. he even said he'd lost like 20 or 30 million dollars oh yeah yeah there's a there's a high that they get out of the gambling that's similar to their competitive juices that's what it really what comes down to they're addicted to it the only thing is now is you have more information now and you have more ways of catching guys doing things and that's what's going on a lot of this stuff is kind of petty what was it? He got caught doing some kind of pool or something. I don't know. I don't know if that's no, basically, true. Basically, if you look at the odds on props, he was the he was the target of some certain props as far as him uh, not achieving certain point levels. And we're talking like a what uh, half a three pointer, like five points, because he's a bench guy. He's a bench guy that that plays very little. So there are actual props out there on let's say he's the 11th guy on the Toronto team. There's actual props on how much or how well the 11th guy on a team will play in certain games. So there's been several instances. If you look at it in the uh, actual, I put it in the chat as far as the link is concerned on ESPN.com. There were more than one instance where he leaves with certain ailments during the course of the game. And uh, again, that matches up to certain betting lines or that were made on him as far as there was an increase on these certain props for him not to achieve these scoring or three-point shooting or certain levels. <laughs> and he conveniently on these certain days, uh, if you look at it, and again, the story is there, went out of the game with these different ailments. So, hmm. Like Kurt says right now, there were prop bets for tonight's show that I would have an orange pineapple drink. So yeah, there you go. Of course, if you won on that, but it is, it's very suspicious to say the least. I mean, we talk about Otani making the news today. Of course, he's claiming that he had no, uh, he did not make any bets. It was all through his interpreter and all that stuff as far as him doing it and whatnot. So he was very adamant and out front. And I think like Joe says, I think this is going to eventually get behind, you know, be pushed out of the way because Otani is, if they can't find anything on Otani directly, then that's going to be a done deal there. But this is, this smells, Joe. This smells. If you look at that story and you read like the, oh, huh, huh, huh. Very interesting. Don't you think? You play with the devil. The devil eventually catches you and your people doing things. Mm -hmm. Playing with things. The NBA corporate business is a greedy whore. Not just a whore, greedy. They can't help themselves. They want that money. And in that money, they they you get casualties on the way that they don't care about. And on top of that, they punish. It's kind of like the NCAA before the NIL. The NCAA got all the money. And the second you bought a candy bar, they were on your butt asking you where you where you got the money to buy the candy bar. And it got to the point where people got so fed up because of how tight they were that it ended up backfiring on the NCAA. And you've seen the results. The only yeah. ne negative with that is the collegiate game is losing all the great coaches now. So now we're going to have watered down coaches. We're not going to have any Nick Sabins. We're not going to have any Jay Wrights, any Mike Shashevskis. No one. No Roy Williams anymore. I think we're going to have a bunch of uh, free agent coach type guys. Look at Calipari. Calipari keeps losing. Uh, as good of a recruiter as he is, as big as a, of, of, of a. He had a loaded team. Yeah. So there's a there's issues. There's issues with that we're, we're, we're noticing in the NBA that I think we're in denial of. The NBA has always been a, an arrogant player first league, but it's gotten to the point where now it's 10 times worse. Yeah. And the coaches can't really coach. And if they do, they get fired. If there's one thing that I can say 
a hundred percent that LeBron really messed up with the with the NBA is his ability to not respect the coaches that he's played with. The uh, bigger staff. Did you hear about the things with bigger staff about? You know, he's the Cleveland coach about how uh, they believe betters were trying to contact him. You know, doing the things about you know I know where your yeah are, yeah that, 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 that's, that's threatening that, him. That's yeah, that, that's that's bad. Yeah, that's bad. Um. I mean, they already hear some of them already hear it in the arena from betters in the arena yelling at them that they aren't going to cover some some type of bet of theirs. I think you just if that happens, you got to kick them right out. Yeah, but that's you've you've opened Pandora's box, Adam Silver and Roger Goodell and all you Manfred, yeah. Manfred, all you guys open this up. You wanted the money. You want the money, and now what if somebody gets clipped? What are you going to do then? Because you assholes like to right away change rules the second something happens. What happens? What happens if somebody dies because of this? Are you gonna change? Are you gonna stop working with DraftKings and all those guys? The answer is no. Kurt versus justice for Rudy Gobert. <laughs> I'm just gonna say that it's very hypocritical, Joe. Because remember, there was a time when Las Vegas, the city I live in was persona non grata. They, all the sports didn't want to have anything to do with Las Vegas. You know, it was such an evil, such an evil, such so bad to be, you know, be associated with Las Vegas. Oh, then all of a sudden Las Vegas is our friend. Everybody wants to go ahead and be a part of Las Vegas. Let's go ahead and move our team to Las Vegas. Let's go ahead and get a team for Las Vegas. Let's go ahead and make sure that Las Vegas has this draft. Funny how things change in a course of what, a decade uh, as far as the perception from these uh, uh you know sports entities in regards to las vegas and now sports betting on top of it because sports betting is legalized almost everywhere in america <clears throat> is it hypocritical of course it is it's just like when they would not let players sponsor beer yet every commercial is a beer commercial Exactly. And the How thing is, that the, I get this, no, I get this. is this a stupid rule? You cannot drink beer in a commercial, but as soon as you come out of a break, you're watching a movie, you can watch that movie character drink a beer 30 seconds after that beer commercial. What is, how stupid of a rule is that? It's, 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 I'm sorry to use this as an analogy, but, or as a comparison, not an analogy. I'm going to wear a mask coming into a restaurant. The second I sit down, I can take it off. <laughs> so what? The 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 virus goes, hey, hey, oh, hey, they're sitting in the booth. Not they're at the bar. Hey, no. Wait for the people that come in from the front door. Then we'll 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 get them then. <laughs> the the smarter people are, the more information you have, the dumber we've become as a society. We've always been dumb, but there was a reason to be dumb. We didn't get food. We were looking for homes, and I'm talking about years ago. There was issues. There wasn't schools like there are now. Now you have all this stuff, and you have everything at, the, at your fingertips. You don't even need to go to school. You can go online and learn anything you want about the Civil War. You could sit on the Internet for the next six months and learn everything that ever happened in the Civil War more than any class that you can take in college, high school, or elementary school. What do we do? We go on OnlyFans to spank it. That's what we do as a society. That's what we've done with that information. Now, I don't do that. I don't go to OnlyFans. I'm very paranoid when I'm on the internet. The second They're still you go, trying to, Our crowd is still trying to get you to do an OnlyFans. The second... The second you go to those places, God knows what's going to happen there, right? Uh, hell, even Instagram, every time you look at stuff, they're, they're just the algorithm, you, you look at one little thing that you clicked on, all of a sudden now you're interested in watching women work out at the gym. Okay, great. Best thing to do is just put not interested on it. At least that's what I do. We don't only fans, Joe, that costs... <laughs> Thank you for sharing that, Joe. <laughs> Sir, I'm not wrong, right? I mean, I am right. That's what that's what we've done. We've we've gone 
We've gotten all the information that you can possibly have in your life to research and learn and understand. You don't even need school in a lot of ways for that stuff. Yet, what are we doing with that time? Well, it's the thing. Again, I talked about the alcohol. The thing is for smoking. Remember, there was such a movement to get rid of uh, smoking advertising. Yet, you could watch, let's say, any mob movie, Joe. How much smoking is done on mob movies and people smoking... (laughs) You know, there's no disclaimer. What I can't understand is what I can't understand. Why is cigarette smoking not allowed anywhere outside in the first hundred yards? Even when you're outside, you can't smoke these days. Yet they'll let dipshits smoke the reefer in front of children. I'm just saying. I'm talking to Vegas. I'm talking about Vegas. Talking about LA. I'm talking about I haven't been to San Francisco in a while, thank God. But LA, Vegas, the two cesspools of this society right now. I'm sure they do it in New York. I'm sure they, they did it in New York too. When we were there at the end of December, I smelled it in and around. Not in Orlando. You know, when I was in Orlando. Now, the, thing with, the thing with New York that's a little bit easier to deal with is the fact that it's kind of cold sometimes. So you don't, you know, people are not likely going to be smoking outside during the winter. But I, I don't. The hypocrisy thing is always something I attack because nothing ever really does make sense. There are rules for certain things, and then there's no rules for this thing. Or there's a rule for this person, but it's okay for this person to do it. Well, how, how does that make any sense? It doesn't. It, 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 I don't know. It just doesn't. I'm just noting, Search, a double standard in, in the way the media it portrays things. Again. You know, I, smoking kills. It killed my dad. So, uh, you know, to me, it's it's very much of a no-no for, you know, as far as that's concerned. But, you know, you have it all over the place in certain media. You can go on YouTube and see people smoking all the time. You can go on TV and see people smoking all the time. Yet somehow you can't advertise it. I just think, and just like with alcohol, you can't see them drinking the alcohol in the ad. But sure enough, you could watch Lakers game. And you can watch people drinking and guzzling beer from the front row. (laughs) I'm just saying it's just weird, Joe. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying it's out there. It's things I've noticed over the course of many years. And you just ask yourself when you sit back, it's like, why? Why? What is it really stopping if they advertise? Here's, 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 the, here's a button on this dis- discussion. It doesn't matter what it is. Human beings have the gift of rational rationalization, and it's equally a curse. Mm-hmm. That's what makes us human, is being able to rationalize, not to go and kill your neighbor if he upsets you or she upsets you. Now, the problem on the other side is Humans have this habit of rationalizing what's okay based off of their feelings on things or what they can benefit from it. So you have leaders in whatever industry, they'll say, hey, don't do drugs, don't do this. Then you're seeing Marion Barry smoking crack in a hotel room. That's a reference. Now, that's the dated reference, but I know <laughs> okay. that was a scandal back in the day. It, it's 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 easier for me to sniff out BS the beginning. And a lot of times the sniffing out BS is I don't believe anyone until I have a reason to believe you. You can sit there and you can tell me how great you are, how you do jumping jacks every day and you do whatever. Oh, good. Good for you. Yeah, okay. Oh, the environment is this. Oh, government is that. Okay, well, yeah, sure. Yeah, okay. If you makes it feel better. I've had discussions where I flat out said, I don't care. You don't care about the environment? Nope. And it usually I say that to, to stop the discussion because where are they gonna go with <laughs> You'll it? You'll get the person to go, like, That's huh? It. Yeah, I'm like, I don't care. I if this planet blows up i don't give a shit i don't care i don't i don't actually i don't and like in general i don't because i don't believe anybody i don't believe anyone 
I don't believe environmentalists. I don't believe politicians. I don't believe anyone when it comes to stuff like that because how do I know you're not? How, how do I know you're not lying? How do I know you're getting the right information? All scientists, almost all scientists in this world, are backed up money wise by rich people. So how do I know you're not rationalizing your scientific findings? There are a few out there that are honest. There are a few people out there, like let's say Tesla who said, I want to make this available for the world because I want the world to have this. I'm not saying everyone sucks. It's just that most people suck. It's funny. Now they're getting into which is the most popular Australian band of all time. ACDZ, NXS. I'm, I'm, I'm I, don't, waiting. I, don't, I don't think you could get past ACDC, honestly. A men at work. I, I'm waiting for I'm waiting for Kurt Affair to put in the wiggles. I'm just I'm just waiting for it. <laughs> but is the Lakers fast break search and destroy? Uh, I just truly I I know how many chat rooms that you govern, and I know that we're not the priority among them. But anytime you're here, it is immensely appreciated, uh, and I tr truly appreciate everyone out here on the best chat room that's out there. And of course, BD, everybody was on Twitch tonight, everybody on Facebook. I truly appreciate all the likes, follows, and subscribes. Kind of Kylie Minogue. Hey, uh, she was, I think she's doing a special for Sirius. I, I don't, I, I, as good, as big as Kylie is, I don't right think now. she's bigger than ACDC. No, ACDC just has too long of a run. Yeah, just too, uh, just uh, have too, has too long. I'd say ACDC. I'd say that, yeah. The Wiggles, although they've made some cash over the years i'll leave you that so it is the lakers fast break it is joe sorrow along with me gerald glassford thanks so much for watching and listening truly appreciate it don't forget tomorrow 4 30 is the game time it is the lakers and the milwaukee bucks will lebron be there he is doubtful so we not saying that he's not going to be there but he's usually questionable he is now doubtful so we'll let you go ahead and that means he's not playing there you go. What I want to what I want to know is why why do you make this announcement early? Wouldn't it's you like, want yeah. wouldn't you want your opponent to prepare for LeBron and then say he's not available before tip off? Never understood this announcement. Hey, he's not playing tomorrow. Oh, great! Now we can we have tactical a whole advantage. I guess is not important during the regular. NBA. Are they all in on the draft kings deal? Oh, that's too funny. You guys are crazy out there. It is, of course, the Lakers fast. I'm not going to rant Sunday. Milwaukee was a loss in my book, regardless if LeBron was playing yeah. or not. He had said that. He said Milwaukee and Indiana were the sure loss. Yeah, I think those are going to be the losses. And if one replaces another. I, 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 the Lakers you know. go four and two. I'm ecstatic. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm ecstatic. For a team that's gone 12 and 20 on the year on the road, Joe. If they go four and two, I think we should all be ecstatic. AD has a chance, especially those last three games, to basically run 30, 35, and 15 or 20 on those in those games. They have yeah. no front court help. They they should be able to win those last three games, even though they're going to be very tight scheduled games. Xbox says we want a rant regardless of result. Listen, you will get a rant when I tell you you're getting a rant. You don't tell me when to give you a rant. You understand? I do what I want to do. You don't tell me when to do it. <laughs> Rant on command. <laughs> See, people, when these great people meet you in person one of these days, or they come up and walk up to you, they're going to demand a rant in public. And you're just going to be like screaming in the middle of a mall somewhere or middle of a convention center. And it's just like, rant on command. It's like people like like a like a stand up comedian. Hey, hey, can you tell me a joke, buddy, man? You're funny on stage. Can you tell me a joke? And it's just well, like, just, uh, just talk about politics. Politics usually riles people up. Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Or for us, the Lakers it usually riles us up pretty good. Or how about a replay? That riles you up like very few other things. Let's just have another replay. Replay should rile up everyone. It's a waste of life. <laughs> this is true. And all, all this was created because 
the public wants referees to be able to have to get Ted it Williams' right. eyesight and Tony Gwynn's ability to see the threads on a baseball on plays. Why? You, 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 the NBA basketball game should last two hours. Gubro, the Lakers, he just said, Gubro, that the Lakers, if they lose tomorrow, he's not going to rant because it's what was expected in the first place. Uh, by the way, before we go, uh, Dodgers, uh, speaking of betting, uh, FanDuel put out its uh, one loss records expected and uh, Dodgers 103. I was curious. Uh, do they achieve that or do you see some injury oh, bugs? I don't I don't, I don't getting see to like maybe 97, 98, and still. Oh, no, 100, 100 games for sure. Okay. Yeah, 100 games for sure. There's okay. just too much talent on that team. Okay. The issue is going to be after the 103. The, Dave Roberts. I'll try to enjoy the regular season as much as I can, but Dave Roberts is is a bane to, 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 to any existence of ba- baseball knowledge. He is a terrible terrible manager absolutely horrendous and he has a track record that's a mile long i just i kind of unfortunately have to hope that clay clay clayton kershaw isn't available in the playoffs you think the angels move of getting ron washington is the first smart move that they had in years some people are saying that i'm i'm just i'm just saying they gotta get rid of that clown that's on their team which i don't think they're gonna be able to unfortunately mr rendon when you have players like that on your team you're you're already in the in the sewer oh he'll get injured 20 games in and then trout will get injured 30 games in yeah i would get him off the team just eat the money and 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 let him go that what he said uh, this this last this offseason was 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 pathetic he should be embarrassed but the Angels are like that. They they hold on to all these contracts. I mean, my gosh, you've seen it. They will not trade. They will not trade these guys, no matter how much they eat out of their contract. And uh, sorry, cool bro, 71 wins was predicted. Uh, is the over-under right now for 71 wins. Angels are going to suck this year. So, sorry. Angels need to figure out when they want to start developing talent. That's a bad organization. The reason why Otani went to the Angels is because they had the DH. If it hadn't been the D, if if the DH had been in the NL, he would have went to the Dodgers. Uh, what's the name of your cousin's restaurant again? Dante's asking. Savage Chef in Menifee. He also owns another restaurant in Old Town in Temecula called Soros Grill. But Men- the one in Menifee is the big one. Soros Grill. Cool bro says again. What do you got? What do you have them hope for? They let you down every year, Cool Bro. Artie Moreno needs to sell the team and go retire. They need to do have traded Trout two, three years ago. Trade, Trout Trump. doesn't want to go anywhere. Doesn't matter if he wants to go anywhere. He was had some value before he got injured every single year. And then Otani, you let him walk out of the door for free for nothing. What were they going to get for him during the summer? So you don't think if he would have been at the trade deadline, if they would have put him up the trade deadline, what would they have gotten? Anything. Three prospects, something. Something. It's better than nothing. Would the Dodgers have made that deal? Dodgers have a much better farm system than the Angels. Angels have been known to be one of the worst farm systems for decades now joe Mm -hmm. well the sad thing is they have the same amount of world series this century as the dodgers that's true that's the sad part that's the part that bothers me is it doesn't matter if you're competitive if you're not winning at all at least every now and then darren says people are raving and ranting about the food at soros grill no it's good food it's very good food My, my family makes very good food I worked on that movie, Angels in the Outfield, Kurt, by the way. But I'll leave it at that. Uh, once again, it is the Lakers. Danny Glover. Yeah, Danny Glover, yes. He's a good guy. Oh, yeah. no, I was in the special effects department. I oh. We worked, our special effects company did some scenes as far as when they're flying the Angels and catching the ball and all that stuff. Yeah, so that's what they did. That's what I was part of. 
the uh, I guess uh, behind the scenes stuff per se. Yes. Cool, bro. While you're eating that that trash from McDonald's, uh, you might want to stop smoking crack too. <laughs> and on that note. Am I on IMDb? No, I'm not. The only t- the because uh, I work for Pacific Pacific Data Images, I am. Film Studios. He is uh, the only movie I ever got a credit on was Double Dragon, uh, the video game, uh, the adaptation with Robert Patrick, uh, Scott Fox, I think, also in as well. That I got a credit in. That that you can find me on the back as one of the many names there. But yeah, just uh, our company did just. Uh, you know special effects shots we did i worked on beverly hills cop three uh, species outbreak those are probably some of the more well-known ones i am natural born killers that was interesting and i'll leave it at that That that's interesting for altogether different reasons it's kind of whacked out stuff that they wanted to go ahead and do with that movie it's stuff that really wasn't available to do at that point in time but uh, Gerald uh, was also in Top Gun as Iceman. No, no, sorry. You know, as I always say, people tell me, oh, you look like Val Kimmer. I said, I'd rather have his paycheck. I will leave it at that. Yeah, Dante, it was horrible. And the special effects were horrible. I know, because we I, I helped work on them. So I will leave it at that. Once again, it is the Lakers fast break. Yeah, the game was good. I will give you that, Dante. It is Gerald Glasser along with Joe Soro. Please tune in tomorrow, 4.30 p.m. Pacific. Uh, right there for you. It's going to be the Lakers and the Bucks. Will LeBron play? Most likely not. He is doubtful, but will the Lakers be able to muster enough to get the victory tomorrow? We'll see. We'll be part of it. And then afterwards, the post game, maybe we'll have on L Rob, maybe Stone Hansen, but who knows? Plus, also top off your evening with the nightcap with Joe Soro. Uh, why do I want to look at Joe's McDonald's cup? Cool, bro. He doesn't have a McDonald's cup. He said he told you he doesn't go to McDonald's. Yeah, believe me. Believe me, Bloodhound. Special effects from when I was working in the uh, early to mid-90s. I love their hot mustard sauce, though. It is so much different. So much different than what it is now. It's night and day. It's not even close. And I understand a lot of it's green screens now, et cetera, et cetera, but the advancements in technology are just so far and away from what I was working on at the time. But um, for me, a McRib once every two, three, four years when they bring it back and yeah, I'm good. I think I'm good. You saw him using a McDonald's cup. Okay. Good job. Cool, bro. Thanks for wasting our time. Once again, it is the Lakers fast break. It is Joe Soro along with me, Joe Glassford. Thanks so much for watching listening. We do have the best chat room that's out there. Cool bro included at the Lakers fast break. But yes, join it tomorrow. Join us for the game that will be on playback.tv slash Lakers fast break along with YouTube and Facebook. It's the Lakers and Milwaukee, 4.30 p.m. on TNT. Join us for the simulcast. Join us for all the fun. Join us for everything that you can talk about when it comes to the lakers dante said only lightly salted fries on the mcdonald's fries okay that's smart man right there on the lakers fast break podcast